I didn't even have to have the TV turned up, and I heard you yelling play-by-plays clear across town. You were so excited <laughs> oh, about that game. Oh, my heavens, yes. It's, it's only just a few blocks over there, but we had to bellow tonight to get over that crowd. Oh, Absolutely. I guess so. A lot of fun. I really hope both teams get NCAA berths. Mm -hmm. they, they deserve it. Good evening, everyone. It was a madhouse at the Hammond Student Center, as most of you saw earlier this evening here on KY3. The Lady Bears have won their way to a fourth straight invitation to the NCAA National Tournament. They'll learn their fate in terms of opponent and sight tomorrow morning around 11.30. LaTanya Davis, a great night. Tina Robbins was named as the tournament's most valuable player. And what a show as the Lady Bears win it 88-71. And to the tournament, they will be going. Three and six, and there they are. The we definitely didn't want it to be like last year. We wanted a, a big lead. They have three-point shooters. They have a post. They like the lob, too. We didn't want it as close. So we tried to keep a spread, like, like Mel said, about 10, at least 10. The factor that I think is amazing is you're watching two basketball teams that played back-to-back. You know, and this was a quality, hard-fought ball game. That that's asking a lot of basketball players. Um, I'm just making that statement that I think that shows great uh, discipline and mental toughness by both programs. Lady Bears, the winners tonight. Now, while the scene was a frantic one here in town, it was a wild one tonight up in Columbia where Big Red is waiting for us. And Joe Hickman, yeah, hey, I, I, in all honesty, I did not hear you at 6 o'clock, but yes, son, you do look gorgeous. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. I've waited three hours to hear those words, Ned, and I feel much better <laughs> about my life now. I, I don't look gorgeous, but I have some other people here with me that do. In fact, they just invaded a couple of seconds ago and said, can we be on television? So these are the Norwood Lady Pirates, a few members of them that have their medals, Class 1A Girls State Champions, and there's something they've always wanted to do, so I'm going to let them do it right now. Go ahead. KY3, the place to be. They wanted to do that. I didn't want to do a commercial, but they wanted to do that. Anyway, we're going to take a look now at how all the championship games went today involving your area teams. <laughs> Lockwood added the Class 1A boys trophy to its trophy case by knocking off 12-time state champion Scott County Central. Coach Dennis Cornish saw his top-ranked Tigers lead by as many as six in the final quarter by the 25 points of junior center Chris Shorter. And although the Braves got back within one, sophomore Jason Coos would hit five consecutive free throws in the last two minutes to secure a 64-60 Lockwood victory, proving they were not intimidated by a team that had won seven of the last eight state titles. We've been looking forward to it all our lives, and ever since we were little, we'd watch them play, people play in Scott County and we thought if we can get there that's that's the biggest hurdle and then when we got here we thought just relax and play and if it happens it happens and we knew deep down inside that we could do it. So. While Lockwood was winning the 1A boys title Norwood took the 1A girls crown. Facing Rich Hill the two teams went into the final six minutes of their championship tied at 31 before senior guard Hannah Hancock made two consecutive trays to push the Lady Pirates out to a six-point lead. From there Norwood would go on to a 46-38 victory adding their first ever girls basketball championship to their trophy case because they handle the pressure. Whenever we get in tight situations like that, I'm not really worried about it that much because we've been in so many of those situations this year. And I know that we had the heart and desire to go out there and do it. And finally, Warsaw had a heartbreaking chance at a Class 2A girls state championship taken away from them despite the 23 points of Brandy Moloney. Their opponent, top-ranked Eskridge, led by the 28 points of LaShonda Albert. Albert tied the game at 50 with this long-range bomb with a minute 15 left. And moments later, this steal and bucket by LaTanya Watson gave Eskridge a lead they'd hold on to 53-52 to as Warsaw missed two chances in the final 30 seconds to tie it. Still, the Lady Wildcats end up with a 26-6 record, a second-place finish at state, and that's the best in school history. Euphoria and depression. You can find them all here at the Class 1 and 2A state championships. Let's check the scoreboard and see what happened with all the teams today. First in Class 2A, girls championship, Wellington. Uh, Wellston Eskridge beating Warsaw by a single point in a heartbreaker for the Lady Wildcats, 53-52. Springfield Catholic, the winner of the girls' consolation, 41-38 in overtime over Brookfield. Boys' championship just underway between the second and third-ranked teams in the state, Portageville and Fatima. The boys' consolation went to Alton Big over Cold Camp, 65-38. Class 1A Girls Championship going to Norwood, 46-38 over Rich Hill. Girls Consolation won by Wellington Napoleon. And the Boys Championship, Lockwood, the number one team in the state, stays there with their four-point victory over Scott County Central. The Boys Consolation going to New Franklin, 65-53 over Rockport. Ned, we've had a lot of fun up here. It's been fantastic to watch these teams go through the ups and the downs of the Show Me Showdown. Class 3 and 4A will be here next weekend. And by the way, might I just say, Ned, you look pretty good yourself tonight. Thanks for the compliment. You'll get yours when you get back, Hickman. 
I got news for you. Do drive safely, though, all right? Lockwood Thanks. and Norwood state champs Joe Hickman in Columbia. Earlier this afternoon, the Class 3A state championships, I beg your pardon, quarterfinals, held at the Hammond Student Center. Republic, Dave McWhorter looking on as Ashley Fry scores on the break. Cindy Wise had 20, and Republic defeating Marshfield for the second time this season, and Republic will make its second trip now to the state championships next weekend up in Columbia. Then later on, it was Nixa in the red uniforms against Jefferson City Helias. That's Trevor Gregg hitting for Nixa, but it wasn't enough as Helias wins. And on the Class 3A playoff scoreboard, Republic 66, Marshfield 49, and Jefferson City Helias 67, 49 over Nixa. Republic and Helias advancing. Class 4A tonight, Springfield Kickapoo on its way back to the state championships. Lady Chiefs 57, Jefferson City 42, and St. Charles West defeated Joplin 77 to 67. Now, elsewhere today, neither Mizzou nor Arkansas is worried about making the NCAA tournament field. Both are in because of their high ranking. But in the conference tournament semifinals this afternoon, each came up short. Nebraska forced the action early. That's Jerron Boone scoring on the layup. And in the closing seconds of the first half, a steal by Nebraska. This is Jamar Johnson in for the score. And Nebraska had the lead over Missouri. Now, the Tigers kept it close. Here's Paul O'Linney from three-point distance, but it was not enough because Nebraska was searing Eric Piatkowski, and Nebraska upsets Missouri. First Big 8 Conference loss of the year for the Missouri Tigers. This is the pyramid in Memphis, and Nolan Richardson has every reason to be upset because Nebraska, I beg your pardon, uh, Arkansas is losing to Kentucky. That's Roderick Rhodes scoring there, and you can tell what's going on by looking at the Arkansas bench. Kentucky wins, and on the college basketball scoreboard, a completely turned around day. A number of the top ranked teams in America losing. Lady Bears win. They're the Missouri Valley Conference champs. Mizzou loses to Nebraska. It's Oklahoma State over Kansas by one point. Elsewhere, Kentucky beat Arkansas. North Carolina in overtime. Duke loses to Virginia. Arizona loses. So does Michigan to Northwestern. Louisville defeated Virginia Tech. UCLA loses. California loses. Florida a winner. Indiana and Texas both in the winner's circle. Well, baseball today, and the long ball was in evidence. On the exhibition baseball scoreboard, the Texas Rangers defeated the Cardinals 9-8. Juan Gonzalez had two runs. Kansas City Royals got two home runs for Mike McFarland, beat the New York Mets the final 7-3. In uh, college baseball this afternoon, the Southwest Missouri State Bears opened up their spring trip on a winning note, clipping southeastern Louisiana 6-5. Those two will play again tomorrow. Nike Tour graduate Brendel Chambly is a two-stroke leader after three rounds of the Honda Classic in Florida. Davis Love the third is second. I now got it. You figure that one out. Davis Love the third is second. Hockey 4-4. Four, four. St. Louis Blues, New York Islanders not over quite yet. Okay, I feel like I need <laughs> to tell you something, Ned. I don't think Joe likes it when you call him red. You don't? I think you should call him handsome. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll, we'll, we'll check the adjectives for that. Roger's thesaurus is coming out. Thank you, Ned. Get out your lottery tickets because there was a jackpot winner in tonight's Missouri Lotto drawing worth an estimated $2.2 .2 million. Those winning numbers were 11, 18, 24, 27, 36, and 42. No one hit the jackpot in the super cash drawing, though. Here are those winning numbers, 4, 6, 23, 24, and 36. Here's the winning pick three now. Well, we're out of time tonight, but our congratulations again to the Lady Bears and to the, uh, and to the high school teams Nor Wood and Lockwood. as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Stay tuned now for Saturday Night Live.